Yeah, we're back. We're live at noon show on a given Tuesday. Uh, this is Community Matters. We're talking about the Big Island. We're talking about PGV Puna Geothermal Venture with its manager, uh, Michael Ikini, and we are so happy to have him on the show. Hi, Mike. Hey, Jay. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. We want to catch up with you on, on PGV. I, I have uh, been, you know, so happy that PGV is in the array, the diverse array of renewables in the Big Island. I always thought it was a, a fabulous thing that, that Hawaii had PGV, that it had geothermal. Um, and I always wanted to see it there and more of it. I recall that back when it was 38 um, megawatts and everybody was expecting it to go to 50 megawatts, but there was always resistance. And the resistance goes back to the 90s. And that's a story, another story altogether about the resistance. <laughs> and there was heavy resistance back then. Then you guys have, you know, you have, you have been strong, you have kept on coming uh, and you have, um, you have dealt with uh, the eruption a couple of years ago and with COVID and you are to be complimented for your determination and your contribution to the, to the grid uh, in the big island. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to talk to you, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there was a, a couple of stories I wanted to mention. One is uh, that you were going to go back on and the other is, um, you know, a continuation of that same kind of opposition you saw in the 90s. Some of the same people opposing you. It's, it's a life work for them uh, to oppose you. Um, and you have a couple of lawsuits pending. I know you can't talk about that. That would, you know, but let me talk about it. I think it's just activism. I, I don't think it's constructive for anybody. This is a time for Hawaii to work together. This is a time for Hawaii to achieve its promise. This is a time for Hawaii to find new technology. It's a time for Hawaii to be so concerned about energy um, and, and climate change. And it, it, it just amazes me that people are not all on board about that. The very same people who complain about high electric rates are the ones who are making them higher yet. Uh, you guys were uh, you know, producing, uh, gee, at, at least a third of uh, the energy on the big island. And you, when you were offline, you were, you know, that was a problem for Helco. And now you're, you're back, or at least in part, and uh, you have the promise of going back to where you were and making that contribution, Big Island Grid, and uh, hopefully reducing rates. So what's not to like about that, Mike? <laughs> I, I, I don't know of anything not to like. No. <laughs> tell us how you've been doing. Uh, tell us how it w went for you during the, uh, the period of eruption and the, and the roads being covered with lava. Uh, what kind of challenges did you have in that time? Sure, sure. So yeah, if we if we go back a, a little bit, the, the eruption actually started. You know, the migration of magma started in April, and then the earthquakes and the ground movements. But the actual eruption to surface took place on May third, two thousand eighteen. The same day during that eruption is when we shut the plant down. You know, and we activated our emergency response plans, kicked that in gear and made preparations uh, for the lava to uh, approach us. And um, <clears throat> to make a, a, a longer story short, we, we did get uh, our substation and three of our geo and, and a few of our wells covered by lava. And the eruption, which was a spectacular event, it's a life once in a lifetime type of uh, event. It's amazing. Uh, we were fortunate that, you know, the majority of the facility remained and the eruption ceased in early August. But the landscape was really still full of heat and residual, you know, magma below that's not hardened. So it wasn't until the end of 2018 where we were then able to build a pioneer road back to the facility. So in December of 2019 is when we first was able to come back up. Prior to that, we would have to fly in and do inspections and check out the, check out the facility. What's so a pioneer did, road, Mike? What's a pioneer road? Uh, basically, uh, unpaved gravel, uh, strong enough for um, sturdy vehicles to travel on, like a four-wheel drive and an ATV. And the one positive note with that is when we reestablish our, our access, we're able to voluntarily, we, we built um, a little offshoot to the folks to the east of our facility that were surrounded by lava. 
So we allowed access to our, near, our nearby residents or community members. We had on the order of uh, almost 300 folks, you know, on this list that were able to go in. And, uh, and it wasn't, you know, this was in April of 2020. And it wasn't until November that the, at the end of November that the county actually reestablished the, the road that was covered below us. So there were several months where our, our, our community and nearby members could go back home. Mm -hmm. So we were happy and pleased to, to help out. And since then, we've been doing refurbishment, overhauls of all of our equipment, our generating equipment. We've uh, worked very closely with Hawaiian Electric. Those guys, I tell you, they're, they're great, great to work with. And, you know, they, they had part in this because um, the substation on their side got inundated and, and several of the transmission poles and lines got inundated. So, of course, we had to go through the approval process with the PUC for the transmission line rebuild. It was basically Hawaiian Electrics took the lead. That's their, their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, and <clears throat> so they rebuilt the substation. We rebuilt the substation. We drilled a couple of new geothermal wells. And it took us till this time, uh, like I said, uh, what, uh, we started back up on November 5th, yep, 2020, almost two and a half years since the shutdown in, in early May of 2018. And yeah, it's a huge, huge accomplishment from our perspective. Uh, you know, like you said, uh, just staying, staying focused and it's been, it's been challenging, rewarding, you know, a lot of courage and, and, and our parent company, Papuna Geothermal Venture is our mat, um, which is headquartered out of uh, Reno, Nevada. We're publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And, you know, from the very onset of the eruption and the plant shutdown, the, the chief executive officer flew over here and, and, and informed all the employees that we're keeping everybody on the payroll, you know, at least for the whole year until we see what happens. So that was a big deal. So we did have, I think maybe one or two employees that voluntarily left because they didn't wanna be out here with the eruption. But I tell you the day that, a couple of big events, the day that we reestablished access was a huge step. And then, you know, the day that we came back online is another milestone that we're all very, uh, very, very pleased about. And we're looking forward to, to coming back online providing the re renewable clean energy to Hawaii Island, Hawaiian Electric, you know, some of the lowest uh, rates available. We were 31% uh, of all the energy in 2017. You know, so pretty close to, like you said, one third, right? And so we, we wanna get back there. And, um, you know, we actually are in discussions with, with the new contract as we speak. So hopefully that'll come to fruition soon. Yeah, that's, um, you know, you're very important to the Big Island. You're very important to Helco. I mean, uh, how did they handle the gap while you were offline? They must have been scrambling, no? So fortunately, you know, Hawaiian Electric, Helco, uh, they, they had units in standby, you know, so their, their plans to transition from oil to all renewable, you know, they've got a very, very good plan, very detailed. So they've decommissioned at least one unit that I'm aware of that's in Halo down at the, at the Bayfront area. But then they put uh, other units in more longer term layup. And, and so those were the units that I believe that, that helped get them through with, with us being offline. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now that you're coming back online, that you are back online and there'll be more, uh, they can take those uh, older units off again, yeah. That's correct. That's I, I would I you know I believe that's their plan. They can confirm, but that that's what they've been trying to do all along. Yeah. So um, it's interesting to have to rebuild in the face of all that um, um, the challenges presented by the lava, especially the lava underneath down down that got into the shafts and so forth. Sure. Um, did you change your technology? I mean, because since the time they were originally drilled, a lot of Technology has changed, especially around geothermal. Um, so, uh, what, what kind of new technology did you deploy for that? Well, we've we've been, I would consider us to be ahead 
uh, regarding technology, you know, the, the, the drilling process, you know, the geothermal industry has learned a lot from the oil and gas industry, you know, and, and they're very more mature uh, in terms of technology. And, and so we, we have uh, implemented similar technologies, you know, auto, uh, automatic or continuous monitoring of the drilling process in process, you know, compared to years ago, um, when you're drilling down a depth, uh, and if you wanted to, to determine what your direction is, you would have to come back out and go in with a compass and, and, and you know, determine it that way. Today, it's all done automatically with high-tech instruments. Um, our, our folks understand the, the, the field. You know, they have, we have very good with historical knowledge of the area, you know, so. As I recall, ORMAT is loaded with engineers, isn't it? In fact, the CEO that who you introduced me, uh, there was an event that I covered back a few years ago at Pune, and yes. uh, there was a, an Israeli CEO person. Uh, he was an engineer of many, many years. His primary occupation was an engineer. Is he the CEO today, or is it somebody else? So we have uh, a new, uh, a different CEO today. Uh, we, uh, in fact, our CEO is has recently taken on the responsibility as the chief executive officer. His primary background is not engineering, but uh, the previous CEOs, like you say, were, and, but, you know, the company is, is, uh, it's got engineers. We have a, a host of them, super folks, super mechanical, electrical, you know, thermodynamics, uh, controls. Our, our guys are like cutting edge engineers and we're really proud of them. So uh, when you when you re reorganized it or rebuilt it as necessary, that you put in uh, a new uh, uh, safety equipment, safety engineering, uh, to reduce the possibility of um, you know negative effect uh, from the drilling. So we've we've implemented uh, you know we've learned a lot from from this eruption, and you know we've implemented some some safeguards that we think will will help us going forward. Um, the way we have constructed our cellars and the piping, um, that, that's something that, that was, you know, you, you, unless you go through something as, you know, like an eruption, you, you just don't know, right? So it's amazing. Yeah, so we've implemented a bunch of things, um, not just on the technical side, but even on the administrative side, the procedural side, um, the, the communications with the county and civil defense. You know, so one thing about civil defense, boy, so we always go through these after review processes, you know, after an event and you go over what, what lessons learned, uh, what can we do to improve next time? So yeah, we're always looking to uh, have that continuous improvement in all the processes that we do. So during this period, um, Mike, um, you know, there, there was discussion with Hawaiian Electric about a new power purchase agreement. And I really never, I never came to the, to the end of that. I never, I never found out the result. You intimated a minute ago that those negotiations were still going on. What's the status? What's the expectation? Sure. So prior to the eruption, we were in discussion with Hawaiian Electric, Helco, about a repowering plan. You know, so the equipment we have out here, Jay, is almost 30 years old. It's outdated compared to the equipment that we, we have today. They're considered dinosaurs. So what we had intended and planned to do, which we, we did eventually, is we wanted to replace the existing equipment with more modern equipment, right? And the results would be because of efficiencies and increase in output. So from 38 megawatts, the repowering project replacement with new equipment would increase our output to 46 megawatts. So we have that proposal that Hawaiian Electric accepted. So there's an agreement between the utility and PGV. And so that proposal was submitted to the PUC at the end of 2019. So there's been participants in, in the docket it's a normal process that we go through, that all power producers go through. And information has gone back and forth. And the, and the, and the commission is reviewing all of this information. And we're hopeful 
that a decision will be made very soon and hopefully before the end of the year. We're not certain, it's in the hands of the PUC, but the four key elements for this proposal is number one, we will delink the price from oil. None of the none of the contract will be linked to oil. It's all a, a fixed pricing, you know, for the duration of the of the of the term of the power purchase agreement. So delink the price of oil. Remove the old inefficient equipment and replace it with new efficient equipment, and get the gain of eight megawatts. Right? And to extend the term of the contract. The existing 38 megawatt, megawatt contract would terminate at the end of 2027. Now that we would invest into all new equipment, we were we were proposed to extend uh, the contract out additional years. Mm -hmm. And and the beauty of all this is that the new equipment would utilize the same amount of the geothermal resource that the existing facility is utilizing. But again, like I said, with the efficiencies, it's gonna have an improvement of eight megawatts. It's gonna be larger generating units, but fewer rotating parts, which will, result, which will result in a reduction in noise and also a reduction in the potential for um, emissions, which is has been a concern. So it's just a, from our perspective, it's just a win, 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 win all across the board there. So yeah, it sounds, it sounds like that. Um, hopefully we hear something this by the end of this year. Okay. Well, have you had the feedback from the community? Has the, has the community been involved in either the negotiations or in some hearing with the PUC? So there's been, uh, there's been um, folks involved at the docket. Uh, we, we as a facility have been sharing the, the general information that we can share at our community meetings. And in general, we have wide support. Um, of course, there's some folks that aren't supportive, but you know, that's, that's how it goes. That's how it goes, yeah. <laughs> it's how it's gone all these years. That's, that's how good. it's gone all these years. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll probably continue. <laughs> right. By the way, I have to I have to just take a digression and say, um, you know, I've I've known you for probably 15 years, um, and uh, I I I'm, I admire you very greatly, Mike, for sticking with it, for being the um, you know the operator and the face of PGV all this time, um, and for achieving all the things you've achieved. You are very important to energy, renewable energy, and to the Big Island, in my humble opinion. Yeah, that's how I feel about it. Oh, and you're getting younger all the time. I don't know how you yeah. do that. <laughs> it's the geothermal emissions. Oh, oh, it must be. It's good for you. <laughs> yes, <It's> sulfur. <laughs> well, let's talk about the future. You know, when we first met, I think you were at 38 megawatts, and, and there was always expectation that, you know, you could go to 1,000 megawatts. You had the resource down there. Mm -hmm. And the only question was, uh, you know, what are the steps, you know, going forward? And there was a lot of talk about increasing it, you know, like to 50 or somewhere in the neighborhood of 50. And, mm -hmm. But there was a kind of glass ceiling on that. Maybe many, many factors were playing into that. And it just didn't happen for, you know, the period in which I was watching. I'm glad to hear that it can happen now. And I'm glad to hear it can happen with the existing facility. Um, so it was three wells and, um, you know, your existing facility can actually turn out uh, another, what is it, eight, eight megawatts. Sure. Uh, on top of the 38, it's terrific, uh, yeah. without having to expand the whole thing, you know, in a concomitant way. But you know, what is the what is the future, Mike? Uh, I, you know, if you say that you were at 38, you were providing 31 percent of the uh, energy for the Big Island. Uh, <clears throat> you know, there's a there's a point where the diversif the diversification may be maybe um, somehow um, you know worrisome. Because if you're if you're providing say ninety percent, I'm just that's a I just throw that figure out of sure. the energy on the Big Island, uh, then you you know then the, the Big Island totally dependent uh, on the stability and success of PGB going forward, and that would be somehow threatening because it, it doesn't give you the diversification that you know is a better portfolio. So what what is the ceiling on this? How far can you go? How far do you plan to go? 
Uh, what does it look like in the years to come? You know, good question, Jay. And, and, and you know, I, I wish I could see into the future. I mean, the one thing for sure, we know is Hawaiian Electric wants to transition to 100% renewable energy, right? We know that that's, that's mandated statewide. So, I mean, that piece of the puzzle is a given. We're gonna go away from oil, we're gonna transition. How will that transition look? I mean, there's there's some solar, some, some uh, uh, energy storage, batteries that are coming online soon. Of course, you know, there's that big challenge with the biomass folks. I'm sure you know of that one. Yeah. Um, and you know, and like you alluded to, yeah. If geothermal was ninety percent, it, it's sort of like having like all your eggs in one basket. So I think the key would be, you know, to maybe spread the basket around the island, you know. And it doesn't have to be PGV; it can be other geothermal developers. Um, but diversifying meaning physical location. Because look at what happened in 2018, right? We were 31 percent. We had to go offline. We're we're restoring the facility, coming back online. It's all good things, but you get you get that disruption. So that's that's where the state hopefully can take a big uh, you know proactive role. The state owns the mineral rights, right? So you know in other places in the mainland, oil and gas. Uh, folks that own the minerals or the rights to the oil or the gas, they develop the wells. They don't necessarily put it in, in service, they wait, right? And that would be nice if, if it, it would help develop. I think it would promote more developers to be interested in coming over because the, the well field, the drilling side, that's very high risk. So it's not and easy. Financially. Financially, technically, you know, industry-wide, because it's not easy, Jay. If it was easy, there'd be a, tons of geothermal companies here in Hawaii, but there isn't. Yeah. yeah. But I, you want to get out of that. It's uh, really to unpack that a little bit. It's very interesting. Uh, number one, um, you know, there's, you know, there's still Mother Nature. Uh, there's still the possibility of another eruption anytime. That you know, place has been erupting for thousands of years, and it's not going to stop now. Uh, on the other hand, I expect that you learn some stuff in 2018 and thereafter uh, that would make you more resilient in the case of another eruption and um, maybe maybe get it you know back online easier with less effort, less expense. Um, that's that's one side of this. Um, the other side is, yeah, geothermal doesn't exist only in Pune. It exists in other places, and maybe those other places have have benefits. Um, so it, it, to the extent that you say, oh, uh, you know, Pune is close to the, the rift zone or whatever the, the risk is out there in the ocean. Um, maybe other places in the Big Island have less of a risk. And so other developers could, you know, have an advantage uh, in that regard. And, and therefore you have a kind of diversification of geothermal as well as a diversification of renewables in general. The other, yes. the last thing I wanted to say is that, you know, <clears throat> when I first learned about geothermal, I found uh, from actually from one of the old engineer experts in Hawaiian Electric, that there's a tremendous distinction um, between geothermal and, uh, and other renewables. Geothermal is dispatchable, 24 by seven. You don't need batteries, you don't, you don't, you don't need, it. it's different from solar, it's different from wind, it's certainly Absolutely. different from biofuel. It's the one renewable that goes all day, all night without fail, that is something. Anyway, can you discuss you know, the possibility of a diversification of geothermal on the Big Island or elsewhere in the state? Well, there's a, I don't know, there's a, there's a uh, department under the university system um, headed, uh, you know, Don Thomas was a, was a part of it and it's a lady by the name of Nicole Lautz. I don't know if you've met uh, her. Yeah, I do know her. Her, their department, you know, they're, they're actually uh, embarking on looking at uh, the potential in other locations. I know I've spoken with Dr. Thomas many numerous times, and you know, aside from Hawaii Island, Maui, uh, Oahu have um, have certain locations that's been identified as potential resource zones. And uh, really, the key though is for people, developers, uh, folks that are interested in in geothermal, you, you need to go and do some work. You need to go do some. You know, maybe some pilot holes or 
you know, some uh, other, there's other techniques that can be performed to try and see, um, you know, if there's a potential resource. You can do water, groundwater sampling, gas sampling. Uh, there's uh, electromagnetic, you know, type uh, testing that can be done. So that's where we, we don't have a lot of activity in, in my opinion. And that's where maybe the state can help out. So. Yeah, that, when, when John yeah. Thomas was doing that kind of uh, investigation around Pohakaloa, uh, yes. he found, he found uh, water there. He, right. he found an aquifer that was uh, thousands of feet above sea level. Yes. Uh, a whole new Perch. source of fresh water. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing finds that uh, that, that man is, uh, uh, he did that and he did the deep water source in Hilo Bay, you know, by the airport. That's another amazing story. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, so go, going forward on this, um, it seems to me that you have a, a, a huge prospect of way beyond uh, 38 plus what is eight, whatever. Um, and where, where does it go? I mean, is, is there any, is there a plan, for example, to uh, build other you know, facilities either in this location or other locations uh, by ORMAT, uh, or is ORMAT consider itself limited to uh, PGV? No, you know, ORMAT is always uh, um, considering uh, opportunities and we're worldwide, uh, you know, we, 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 we of course uh, own and operate, you know, over up to a thousand megawatts in the US and international. And then we've, we've also built facilities yeah we've, we've some we've provided facilities to the philippines indonesia all over uh, turkey japan but we're always looking for opportunities so i am aware that you know the the process that the hawaiian electric companies has gone through the irp process uh, there was this rfp for geothermal in 2015, we just could not come uh, to a mutual agreement back then. But I, I, I am aware that the Hawaii Electric um, plans do have for more geothermal in the future. Uh, and so it's just a matter of a developer, whether it's PGB or MAT or others um, participating in that. So uh, from our experience, Hawaiian Electric, for the most part has been pleased with with this technology, like you said, you know, 24 seven uh, dispatchable because the only way we can get off of oil and is we need to replace the equipment that Helco uses today that burns oil with renewable source that can provide the same technology, the ramping up, the ramping down, you know, and, and so far geothermal has, has been able to do that, so. You know, just to ex expand on the notion, this is a, a technology that actually is being used worldwide and it's very um, attractive to a, a lot of places uh, in the world today. Right. My wife and I took a trip to uh, Iceland. We went to Reykjavik there in Iceland. Ah. And, <laughs> and uh, you can imagine, I mean, there's a lot of geothermal in, in, in Iceland and in, in Reykjavik. Yeah. And of course, they get their energy from geothermal, but it goes a step further. And I want to mention this to you in, in you know, the notion that uh, there are other angles, too, you get from geothermal. So you, you, you drive down the road and there's all these apartment houses and condos up there, you know, along the water in the harbor of uh, Reykjavik. <laughs> and each one of them has a box, not a very big box, I'd say the size of a VW bus. Okay, and um, this box is connected to geothermal. And this okay. box gives that whole project hot water. They never have to heat the water. They have hot water day and night, every 24 by seven for all of these buildings, you know, in the city. And you say, gee, that's, you know, that goes beyond the elect electricity generation side of things. Okay. And I wonder if anybody ever thinks of that. Of course, you get a degradation on a, law, on a pipeline that, you know, would go from, from Pune to Hilo or something. But I'm, I'm wondering okay. if there's any thought of that. There has been, you know, there has been uh, uh, one, one uh, opportunity that, that we um, considered and, and was embarking on was uh, utilizing the energy to, to, gen to generate hydrogen ah, yeah, for yeah, transportation. Yeah. So there was lots of interest in that because, uh, you know, hydrogen, um, 
you know, it doesn't make sense to burn oil to generate hydrogen, right? You want to you want to use a renewable source to generate hydrogen, and uh, we we were working closely with the university. Yeah, HNEI. Yeah. HNEI. Yeah. With, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mitch Yuen and others. Yeah. But uh, what had happened is the uh, the 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 lava eruption in 2015 was headed towards the town back then, and so we stopped. We stopped talking about doing it on PGV's uh, location. So, so they had to move to uh, Nelha, right? They did their facility there. But there's always that, that potential. It's something that we would consider definitely. It's you know, a form of utilizing the, 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 the geothermal energy. It's, we would have to work with Helco, of course, and whomever would be interested in, in the hydrogen. But I think there are others, you know, not just PGV, but others worldwide US-wide that are actually considering the use of geothermal to convert uh, and, and generate hydrogen. And hydrogen itself is a storage, um, a storage media, so medium so that you can, you can keep the hydrogen for a long time, you can ship it around, you can use it to generate yeah. energy or heat elsewhere. And uh, that's, that, that could be a big, um, a big piece in the future, I think. It, it but, could address the, the transportation side too. Yeah, you know, that's a big piece. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it, hydrogen uh, is being used in in county buses now, or the big project uh, in county buses in the Big Island. And the Big Island is really, um, you know, it's 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 the it's the preferred island for renewables. It has a higher percentage of renewables there than any other island, as far as I know. Um, and you're part of that, and you will be part of that. And I am so happy and delighted that you're back online and that you have a, a future. In the in the mix, so to say, in the Big Island, and and that you appeared on our show to discuss it. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Mike Kalaikini of PGV of Puno Geothermal Venture. Thank you so much for coming around. Thank you, Jay. Take care and happy holidays to you. Same to you. Stay safe. Aloha.